I'll just ask, if we start working through, well, I've been married 40 years or whatever, yep. if I start changing, working through things, yep. does my partner, my husband then start that as well, or do I grow away from him and, like, what happens? Um. What do you reckon might happen? <laughs> I don't know, but I'd be unhappy if we weren't together. Okay, so, well, at the moment I would be. so what's preventing you from don't making the choice? I didn't really know. It's a fear, isn't it? Yeah. It's a fear that if you do this, that somehow you'll be led apart from each other. And so that's what's driving the question. It's a good question. Yeah, but I understand that what's driving the question is this emotional fear yeah. that if I actually go ahead and do this emotional work that AJ is suggesting to me, What's going to happen at the end is I'll be drawn apart from my partner and I'll be in a... What will I feel then? I'll feel... I'll allow yourself to feel what that would be. Yeah. The, the truth is, though, that uh, your soulmate will be attracted to you as you deal with all of your emotional injuries and your current partner will also be attracted to you. <laughs> Ironically, because you, you're a better person, aren't you? But, but that doesn't mean they'll deal with their stuff. Because yeah. their stuff is about their... Yeah free will, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They have free will just like you do. Mm -hmm. They have the choice to make just like you have. Mm -hmm. And they might make the choice not to deal with their stuff for all sorts of reasons. You know, the mates at work might laugh at them, so they're not going to deal with it. And it might be just simple things like that that cause them not to deal with their stuff. The key is, how much do you want your relationship with God, and how much do you want bliss? Now, at some point in your life, now or in the future, you know, you will need to make that choice of how much you want it. You want, to, you want it more than anything else. Mm. You will get to that point. Whether you make that choice now or a hundred years time after you've passed, either way you'll make it sooner or later. Right? Now, my feelings are, what's the point in being, like, I'm, let's say I've been in a relationship 40 years and that relationship, I still have not learned my lessons I'm still not working through my emotions about all these responses that I have. What's the point of this relationship that I've attracted, if not for that? I need to at least do that. Right? When I do that, what will happen is, I will soon know whether that relationship is the soulmate relationship I think it is, or whether it's not. And if he is my soulmate, then he'll start working through things, didn't you say? He will feel drawn in yeah. doing it, yeah. What, what Mary said she's felt is that she sort of felt in a lot of ways like she was being drawn into it without her being willing. Mm -hmm. oh. And so she went through quite a lot of feelings of anger about that, like feeling almost like she didn't have a free will of her own. Mm -hmm. uh, but she, for some reason, felt drawn. And once she came to the terms of the fact that she just needed to feel her own emotions completely and consistently, then she felt much more relaxed with that prospect. So yeah, he will feel drawn into dealing with his own emotions. Probably whether he's your soulmate or not, but you will recognise it in time, whether he is or not. But why have a relationship with somebody, even if it's been 40 years, that in the end you're not dealing with something, Ruth? Like, yeah. all you're doing is creating a fictitious relationship yeah. then, aren't you? Really? Now, no, that's confronting, because a lot of times we've... We've absorbed 40 years of our life and we've invested is the way we see it. 40 years of our life. But honestly, 40 years in your life is nothing. Like, but the majority of people that you would, the majority of partners that, that um, I would speak to um, have issues. Yep. And they still stay together. Yep. They're happy together. No, they're not. They are happy together. No, they're not. They work through their stuff together. And they have a really good relationship. And so they come to the end of their lives, or one of the, those people come to the end of their lives. And so that's, that's finished then. And I'm thinking, why, why um, disrupt? that relationship um, to work through issues that you're sort of slowly working through anyway. Just a quick survey, how many of you are 100% happy with your relationships? I didn't say that they were 100% happy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> your question I asked was how many of you are 100% happy in your relationships? 96.5. 96. <laughs> 96. <laughs> Let's be honest. So yeah. being unhappy sometimes, is that still happy? <laughs> well, this is the thing. How do you gauge happiness? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, for a it. start. So, so let's talk about happiness. Now, your question is driven by a fear. Yes. What's the fear? Say that again. Your question is driven by a fear within you. What's the fear? I don't have a fear. No, I'm sorry, but you are lying to yourself. I'm not lying to myself. I do not have a fear. What's the fear? I don't have a fear. So why ask the question? Why would you be concerned would about just, what's happening with these people? In the question. Yeah, but why are you concerned about what's happening with these people? Your, your question was no, not surrounding a what? Not a concern, just, a, just an interest. You're not concerned, you reckon? What, no. what do you all feel? Is she concerned? No. What do you feel? Mm. See, no, just hang a sec. All of, you, all of us need to be honest about what we're feeling from each other as well. Mm. What are you feeling? Do you feel there's a concern? Absolutely. What's the, what do you feel the concern is? Curiosity. No, there's more than curiosity here. Yeah. It's a good question. It's a very good question. But there, but there is an emotion driving it. I'm trying to get at this. There's an emotion driving it. Well, the question in the end was she was saying, why disrupt something that people are on the surface happy to tolerate or get No, I didn't say that. I said that people people are working through issues through that relationship that they have. So why the so, thing? So think? why, yes, yeah. yes, so slowly, slowly, and it may not be a fabulous relationship, but people mm -hmm. slowly, slowly are willing mm -hmm. to do the What's the emotion? What's the emotion going along really well? Can you, see, can you see, though, how much all of us have started to tolerate relationships that are not perfect, but rather just satisfactory to a degree. So why do we do that? Because we have a feeling inside of us, and what's the feeling? That we will never get what's perfect. That's the feeling we have. Right? All of us have this feeling that's a childhood feeling most of the time. But isn't the word perfect an individual thing anyway? Of course it's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not so arguing So my perfect could be different to how you're perfect. Yeah. But see, now what are we doing? Now we're intellectualising yeah, our, right, uh, yeah. the fact that we haven't got an imperfect relationship. I think we're judging. I think it's from um, not recognising your truth from within and speaking your truth. Well, so all this surrounding information that's coming together. Very much so. It all gets back down to those three things that I've mentioned right in the end. But if we look at honest, look honestly at things. I'm not saying just because you have an imperfect relationship in your own eyes that you should leave your partner. What I'm saying is, what do you want number one in your life? For many of us, you know what we want? Security, safety, all of these other things. Why do we want those things? Because we're afraid and that's why we want them, right? What I'm saying to you, seek first God's love Seek first God's truth, and all of these other things will be added to you, right? So what that means is that you'll be in a place of bliss with God in a few years, maybe two, three, four years, depends on how much you are dedicated to dealing with your emotions. When you're in that state, you now have, a cre you have the ability to create a totally blissful relationship with the partner. Now, wouldn't you want that if you had that available to you? Wouldn't you want that? So why would you choose to delay that? There's got to be an emotion that chooses the delay of that. You follow me? It has to be an emotion, right? Mm -hmm. That chooses to delay that realisation of that kind of a relationship. So the relation, a lot of the emotions are, you know, we tolerate things being just normal rather than things being blissful. We tolerate it, don't we? Let's look at our lives. How many times in a day do you tolerate something that in reality you think you didn't want? So are you really fear of change? Huge fears of change. We have huge fears of change within us. right? And most of us have huge fear of change because of what the change means. 
not only to ourselves, but our partner, our children, all sorts of things will be affected by these changes, right? Mm -hmm. And we are so afraid of all of that, that, that we then think, in our mind, we then think, do I really want to do this? Right? And my suggestion is to think a bit, a bit differently. My suggestion is to go down the track of thinking it this way. You have the potential of being in bliss with God within you know, a few years of your life. Right? When you are in that state, you then have the potential to actually create a totally blissful relationship with another person. Right? No matter who you have now, it might be the person you have now, even, but you are potentially able to do that. Why not do that as rapidly as is your desire, that your desire feels drawn to do? Why put that off until you die or till they die? Why would you want to do that? But you may not necessarily need to chuck out the one you got. You may very well step up and be honest and truthful. Well, what remember what I said. The one you got, you've yeah. got right now, yeah. has been attracted to you. Mm -hmm. And I've been attracted to you because of your own emotional condition that you need to work through. Work through it. Mm -hmm. But be yeah. truthful, honest, mm -hmm. open, and all those things in working through it. Mm -hmm. You'll soon find out whether you'll stay together or not if mm -hmm. you do that. Won't you? Oh, sure. So do that. That is the only way you'll be ever at one with God. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you, Put your relationship with God first, then your relationship with yourself next. And who's yourself? So let's look at God's priorities for you. Number one is put God first. Number two is put yourself. Now when I say yourself, I mean your complete soul next. So that's you and your soul mate come next. Do you follow me? Is this the same, like you were just talking before about um, with the soulmate um, diagram that uh, the soul operates within God's principles or it, is this what, are they the same things? Yeah. So it's God's principles or is it? All of God's laws actually yeah. revolve around these basic priorities. Yeah. And when I put my priorities out of harmony with God's priorities, I will automatically create pain in my own life. Mm. Automatically. So is that the same as the top ten that they put in the Bible? Or? The top ten? No, no, they are not the ten commandments. What about the Bible? Should we read the Bible? No, why? Well, okay, that's you don't have to read the Bible. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, The Bible didn't exist when I was there. Like, I was a, did I read the Bible? No, like, like the whole. I read the Old Testament, but the whole of the New Testament didn't even exist. It was written by man. Well, the whole lot was written by man. Like, and honestly, um, like. If, why would it be all of a sudden important for you to read the whole New Testament before you can become a one with God when it never was even available when I became a one with God? <laughs> Does that make sense though? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it funny, isn't it, how a lot of things really make sense when you break it down to the brass roots and then you wonder what in the hell is everyone saying about the Bible and you've got to read it every day? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now there are a lot of things that are really good in the Bible. I love a lot of the things in the Bible myself, right? And but that you you, you don't have to become at one with God by reading the Bible. You become at one with God by doing the three things that we just talked about earlier. Is that the same as reading other spiritual texts? Exactly the same. Yeah. Anything that connects you with God, read. Like, honestly, if an R-rated movie connects you with God, you can go and see it. You understand? Like, yeah. what, how will it connect with God? It might trigger some emotion, right? Of, you know, it might be an R-rated movie with violence in it that triggers some fear in you. <coughs> you, and you, read, you have a big cry and release a heap of fear, and you feel closer to God, right? Yeah. So I'm not saying don't do anything. Really. Do what you, your soul needs. To grow. Yeah. Don't judge it, do it, what the soul needs to grow. Remember, every time you act in disharmony with love, you will feel it in your heart. You will, if you open your heart emotionally, you will feel the penalty hit you. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm not saying that you're going to get away with doing everything you choose to do. <laughs> 
I am saying, do whatever leads you closer to God. That makes sense? Yeah. So, God, if you put God first, and then you put your, your soul, your complete soul, next, and then you put your relationship with others, including your children, next. How many of you are putting your children first at the moment? Right. A lot of people do that, right? Because there's a belief that we've got to do that. I had, I had my whole priority list totally screwed up, right? Totally screwed up. You know why? Because the yourself part was down on 999 <laughs> myself, right? It was down there. with a lot of people. Yeah, and how many times do we do that? Right? Put ourselves right at the end of the list. So, if you get your priorities right the way God created your priorities to be, what will happen is you will connect to God very rapidly and you'll trigger lots of your own emotions in the process. You know, if you've been putting yourself at 999, and now you put yourself as second to your relationship with God. You know what's going to happen to everyone around you who are used to you being at 1999? You know, they're going to be quite challenged, aren't they? They're going to be quite upset with you. They're going to trigger some emotions in you. Right? And if you own them, you'll work through a lot of things just by changing your priorities.